Howdy all fuzzy biker here in the magic back room at Baxter Cycle in the mighty metropolis of Marne, Iowa and look what we got laid out today. This is an interesting bike. Um, I don't really know a lot about these. I've often dreamt about them and looked at them but uh, today was the day I thought we'd take a good look at her. Uh, it's a 1969, here's the tag right here, Triumph Daytona 500 and there's the price. It's uh, kind of built in the, you know, the traditional st Triumph style. Parallel twin, air-cooled, you know, unit construction engine, four-speed on this side. You can tell it's a 500 by the closeness of these two, you know, the shifter and the uh, kicker, the shape of the head, the lack of a cast cone on the front. Just a beautiful little bike. 490 cc's overhead valve, dry sump engine. Here's the oil tank on this side. Dual cams. Interesting about this one, dual carburetors. Two of them all concentric carburetors. And that's a sign of performance. You know, uh, I think the Tigers, the 500 Tigers had the uh, single carburetor. Oh, a little gear shift indicator right there. Isn't that cool? I like that. Four-speed transmission. It's supposed to make about uh, 39 horsepower, I believe. That's... I wonder if I got that right. That's quite a number. 39 horsepower for a bike that weighs 356 pounds. Wow. That's not too bad, is it? Even by modern standards. These were known for performance. That was kind of their, their trick, their bag, you know. They were a, a fast running motorcycle. They were supposed to handle very well. They were pretty light handling. They had excellent brakes for the time. They've got this dual leading shoe, kind of a the race brake, you know. It looks like an inlet here, but they usually are covered. Uh, they didn't want water getting in there, but uh, if you wanted to race, you take that cover, you take the uh, blocker out of there, and then of course there's an outlet on this side, I think, yep, right through there. Very good looking brake, I think. I love the way these look. Little hubcap on this side. Telescoping forks, of course. Metal everything. 1969, everything's metal. The tire in the front is a three and a quarter by 18. I think this said 18's front and rear. Yeah, three and a quarter and 18. On the back, it's a three and a half by 18. Check that out. Dual shocks. I think they're supposed to be girlings. I always thought girlings were sh uh, covered, but uh, looks like there's two points you can put it in. Very good looking bike. Again, like I said, two carburetors, amals, air filters. You know, I love doing that. <laughs> I think there's two coils. Yeah, underneath the engine here. Yep, I can feel them. Right down here. Tack drive right there. Very nice. Daytona. Check that out. Little pea shooter pipes. The brake on this side. Mechanical brakes. I always point out the microelectronics of the day right there. Can you all see that? That's how the brake light worked. It was hooked to this rod. So the foot, you know, the foot brake, the pivot point, the rod over here. This is how you adjust the brake. One of the reasons I think I'm so infatuated with uh, brakes on these old bikes, on any bike for that matter, is that that was a, really the first thing I ever learned how to adjust on a motorcycle, I believe. And also my dad was emphatic about, <laughs> doesn't matter how fast it goes, you gotta make sure you can stop, so. <laughs> Which is true, you know, if you're gonna go forward, you gotta be able to stop too. But isn't that just a good looking machine? Very good looking lines, I think. These had a, uh, so the front, this is an eight inch brake, by the way, on the front, and a uh, seven inch on the rear. And I think I said this before, I always call this a half shoe. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but uh, much narrower shoe than the other. Than the one on the front. I just love the way these things look. Very stylish. I love, you know, these bikes have soul. These bikes have very organic lines. You know, you can almost see the draftsman drawing these out, the artists, you know, the people doing the work. Just fabulous, fabulous. Uh, wheelbase was 53.5 inches. There's about seven and a half inches of ground clearance on these. Seat height was about 30 inches. It's on the center stand right now. And the weight, 356 pounds. Top speed of these, and this is kind of cool, um, these are supposed to be able to cruise at 80 to 90 miles an hour all day long with a top speed of about 100, 105. So that's pretty darn good, I would say, for a 490cc, you know. And uh, they were made for handling. I think I mentioned that earlier. They're supposed to have very nimble handling, very maneuverable, lighter weight, you know, um, and have excellent brakes. That was kind of their, you know, they were supposed to be the fastest of the fast in that range. The engines were considered peaky. The power really came on over 4,000 RPMs, I believe. And the red line was about eight. So you had to be able to ride to that, you know. I think I think they vibrated a little bit too. Of course, an older bike like this would, wouldn't it? Just a real piece of art, I think. You know, it's got the classic looking Triumph tank. 
the center ribbed on the center. The, and here, here we have a uh, silver stripe with a white line and then the green. Of course, the Triumph 3D, you know, metal enamel backed marquee on the side here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. gorgeous. Let's take a look under the seat. That's how you pop the seat on these hot rods. Oh, the little line right here comes up. Yeah, you pull that out, that hooks there. Battery right there. These had an alternator already by this time. Uh, you know, my Harley, I've got a Harley Sportster that's a 76. That actually has a generator still. You know, this is 1969, and actually before that, Triumphs already had alternators. Let's jump up here right quick, over here to the gauges. Switch gear, so clutch on this side, of course. Horn, can you hear that? <laughs> this is the high lows right here. Over here is choke, fuel. It's got those really neat barrel shape grips. I love the way those feel when you're riding. They're excellent, by the way. That's that's my favorite style of grip. Brake, of course, on this side. Looks like a fork lock right there. Ignition's over here. Smith gauges. Isn't that cool? These are the magnetics by now. So tachometer on this side. Mechanical tack drive right there. Right to the back of the tack. And then the speedo on this side. There's a guy that lives just south of here. He has a shop where he rebuilds these Smith gauges. I'll put his, his uh, website right here. He can do the innards, he can print new faces, he can recrimp, put new glass in. Just amazing what he can do. Uh, as far as the speedometer goes, let's see where the speedo drive is right back here. So the speedo drive cable all the way up to the speedo back here. Um, amp gauge right here. This is a light switch. And I'm not sure what either light means. I'm guessing neutral and then maybe the alternator light right here, power light. Isn't that just kind of cool the way that looks? I, I like that a lot. Very handsome motorcycle. Looks very light. It's uh, considerably smaller looking than like these 650s over here. You know, this I just did a video on this one right here, 650. Looks quite a bit larger than the Daytona does. And I'm sure the handling wise, this is much more nimble. I shouldn't say I'm sure, I'm guessing. Just a beautiful, beautiful machine. Look at the stripe down the center here. I like it. I like it. Hey, if you all are interested in a bike like this or a newer used Royal Enfield Triumph classic British bike, they got a whole room full of them right here. If you need parts, accessories, doodads, advice, books, anything at all, contact Baxter Cycle here in Marnie, Iowa, or go to BaxterCycle.com. Make sure you tell them Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now, it's a beautiful day out. But not here. <laughs> we've got sun, but the uh, we've got about two degrees above zero. It's actually pretty cold in this room right now. But if it's warm where you're at, get your, get yourselves out there and ride, my friends. Wahoo!